Hello and welcome to the Relay Station. Uh, sadly, it's just me hosting this week because uh, Eris died. Unfortunately, and this is the worst news, he's still had enough time to write an intro before he went. So, in lieu of David being here, which he is not, you get me, Shiver, and some other people, but you do not get an intro, no, you do not, you do get an intro written by David. I'm very short-sighted, so I, I'm, sadly, David wasn't sure who else would be on the cast, so he can only reliably say that I have me, or that I am me, or can he say that? I don't really know. He can, however, say several things. One is that Nitro Typat, who's doing all the actual hard work on this cast while I sit here and twiddle my thumbs for once, went to see a doctor because he kept seeing colours everywhere, but was told they were just pigments of his imagination. He could also say that the other plebs, I mean people that I've got on with me, are among the best, the brightest, the most knowledgeable, the kindest, the most self-effacing, self-sacrificing, self-aggrandizing, self-immolating, self-deprecating, self-fellating people in the Star Citizen community. Also, they were available and said yes when I, this being me, not David, I, just for clarification, asked. What he can also say is that all the words that are said today on the relay station, as well as all the words said on the previous relay stations and future relay stations, are in no way of fact words at all. They are, in fact, figments of your imagination. When we here at Relay make a statement about something, trust us, you misheard us. We probably didn't say what you think we said. And if we said a thing you think we said, well, we probably never actually said anything in the first place. I hate you for so fucking much, Harris. When we, were here, when we here at Relay laugh at something, or at someone, don't worry, there was no laughter. It was just the wind in the trees. And there was no someone either. They were just a myth. When we here at Relay play games, or show images, or rant about videos, or web bow ties, or drink alcohol, or move, speak, breathe, think, or blink in any way, shape, or form, fear not. <sighs> All of that was a figment of your imagination, but we here at Relay are in actual state of fact merely figments of your imagination. But, and there must be a but, there is always a but, but proves the rule, as I was saying, but when we talk about page files, believe me, we are being 100% serious, and every single word we say is the word of law. Page files are more touchy than nuclear reactors. Move them at your great and immediate peril. This is the only statement from us you can ever trust, ever. So long. Thanks for all the shoes. See you next week. David out. Hee hee. But. Is that it? So moving very swiftly along. Thank you How so much. That? It was wonderful. Joining us this week on the relay station <clears throat> is the vi highly venerated, much esteemed, has recently escaped from the Great Congo, Bock Beer. Hi, folks. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me again, Shiver. Thank you for coming. Like, I, I don't know how you managed to come again. I think we didn't we perform a lobotomy on you last time. Keep on coming. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. And joining us is highly venerated in the community we worship him possibly as a god or fallen idol for he did come out of the tomb encrusted with sand for he's known as ghost 404 okay now is it customary to apologize for the podcast before or after the podcast because this is going to be a train wreck yes if you're canadian during okay <laughs> not so whatever okay and Making all of this possible, with great thanks, is possibly one of the greatest producers in the community. Back it's here. someone who hates being praised, who gets a little bit shy when he's told on a stream that he's doing a really good job. Unfortunately, he would never win in a 200-meter race. It is, of course, Nitro Type Hat. All of those are true. Especially the last one. So... We had an ATV this week, and it was exciting, I'm told. I didn't get that excited for it. I mean, just Tony Zerovec saying, we got 3.0 out, and it was hard fucking work. And we're like, yes, it fucking was. <laughs> <laughs> but um, lots of reiterating on the whole quarterly release things. Do you think they're actually going to, you know, I mean, they're really clamping down. They kept saying, we are aiming for this quarterly release. We got 3.0 for the quarterly releases. Do you think they're actually going to keep with the quarterly releases? Or no? 
tell no, us no, tell I us won't. more on your tell us more on your thoughts and your opinions that are not facts in any way, shape, or form. Merely what you believe. I think it's best to uh, <laughs> not look at any dates at all. Don't get any expectations. But I do hope they will stick to those releases. Uh, they are actually trying to with a different uh, dev uh, development format, like Aaron stated in Around the Verse or Reverse the Verse. Um, working at features and optimizations and stuff until 60%, he said. After that, it's bug fixing time and the stuff that gets done in time before the first quarterly patch, they will release it. But who knows what's going to happen? Uh, you also could hear Tony Zerovec say, well, um, we're busy with all these different kinds of, of um, game-related stuff, and when you stitch it together, really weird things can happen, especially performance-wise. So, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, Shiv. I, I really don't know. I hope they can, can stick to those dates, but... If we look at the last years, they uh, seem to to miss some dates, uh, so now and, and then, and basically, uh, yeah, don't don't get salty about it. Just keep continue playing, and uh, we will see when it's uh, it's finished. It's, uh, some of the best advice for all the Star Citizen players, I think. So you you could sum it up as a Dutchman by saying, you know, just relax and have a Bong and a blintz, or a smoke and a pancake. If you're into that stuff, please do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good you advice. Good tech? advice. Ghost, what do you think on the whole? Do you think they're going to hit these quarterly releases, or do you think this is going to be something that's going to shift, miss? And how do you feel about it? I'm definitely excited that they're doing it. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to pretend to be positive and say they're going to actually continue doing it. Um, you know, between Tony and Aaron, they doubled down something fierce this week between the ATV and the RTV of, you know, this is what we're going to do. And it seemed like all their logic behind it was pretty sound. So I'm going to, I'm going to take them at the word again mm-hmm. and pretend that that's actually going to happen. So we'll see what happens. Fingers but, crossed. Nitro. Um, I'm kind of just, I, I'm, I, I like setting the bar low that way that they can fully exceed it. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that they probably won't, uh, keep to the court. I mean, not, I don't want to say they, they completely fail at it, but they, they don't full on keep the schedule that they want to. And they, they probably delay it a little bit. And then, uh, just in the back of my mind, I hope that they they do keep it and and they prove everybody wrong. But I mean, what? Please do point this out to me because I, I would like to know what's stopping this from ever happening. If they're saying it, let's let's say um, because Tony Zerovec said we're currently aiming for three point two and mining the first iteration of. Maybe we'll see. But what if it doesn't make it? into 3.2, they try to put it back to 3.3, and 3.3 was going to have expanded multi-crew mechanics, just plucking anything out of the air at random. Do you get mining and multi-crew? Do you get both in there? So you get, you know, a large, heavy content patch, the next one, and you just get some bits and pieces in the previous one. And in which case, what's to stop it from, God forbid, (laughs) God, uh, being delayed every single patch. So we get to this point next year, we've had no major gameplay mechanics added, and you know we've been left saying, you know, well, we're still waiting for mining, which is you know two patches behind. Is that a possibility to happen, or what? Yeah, I'd I'd say so, Um, because I I think that no matter what's ready uh, when the time of the patch comes. I think they're just going to push out whatever is not buggy. Like, I don't think they'll put out, like, some mining mechanics and it still be buggy uh, just to wait another quarter of a year to, you know, put out the fixes for it. Oh, hey, Jared. 
I, I love how Jeremiah Lee genuinely does kind of look a bit like Disco in that picture. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't they get the shave? Why did they save the shavings? That's it was not... actually not from his beard, though. <laughs> How did they do that? Because that, like, that's not Jeremiah Lee's real beard, I assume. No. I didn't think so. Okay, just making sure, because it looks really real. Well groomed. Yeah. Well attached. Mm hmm. So we've got some mixed feelings about the course of these things. <clears throat> They're double clamping down, but I think we're all going to remain optimistic about something coming out. And uh, it's, it's it's just something better than nothing because we we have had pretty much nothing, you know, before three point oh. There was that huge gap. Is is genuinely a little something better than absolutely nothing after that, or would you prefer to wait until there's big things in there? Um, well, I, I, I think it's best for them to focus on the real underlying basic, um, um, what do you call it? The, uh, oh, come on, English. Can't English the core today. foundation. The, the, the core, the foundation of the game. Get it right. Put that in, in uh, the big patches. Um, but looking at 3.0 now, why not really smaller content stuff in between 3.0 and 3.1 to keep us busy and occupied um, and yeah what you said like um, mining not being into 3.2 for instance it will if it's finished after 3.2 automatically be into 3.3 and that goes for any other stuff if I uh, understood uh, Aaron correctly and I don't mind at all. I, I do applaud. But I think it's really necessary to to make use of that that beautiful uh, patcher we have now and, and stick more content in between just to, well, keep us happy. <laughs> hmm. Because look, hmm. at, look at Twitch now. Um, you see so much uh, uh, Star Citizen streamers who are already, uh, and we're not even a month in uh, already playing other games besides Star Citizen of course but I, I'm not much of a Twitch streamer person you know I, I don't know what's phasing in or out but was there a, a quick but big upsurge in Star Citizen 3.0 streaming and interest as soon as 3.0 dropped uh, you, you saw that it was like going to the top and then it's it's basically must yeah when everyone got like six to ten fps and just like, yeah no, that, that wasn't even in, in ptu yeah not even mm. in the, the 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 public build yeah as bluesy says uh yeah fuse is getting shorter people are yeah i i'd say the general consensus is the feeling is uh the fuse is getting short but i i still think there's um a lot of hits here who just want to sit back and wait happy enough sit, sitting back to wait to get it right sure sure if if for instance if they could um give us a uh, uh our dog fighting back for instance that's uh, a discussion we had with with toby toby Tish and uh, some other uh, like a uh, little bit of madness epic zack all the dog fighting pilots um when we were done with 263 we started to to go and and uh, pick a fight on each other, you know, and that that kept us busy and that kept it interesting, and we were learning, and that's basically not possible at the moment. So if they uh, within 3.0 uh, try to to fix that, that would uh, enlighten us a little bit and uh, lighten up our days. Uh, furthermore, yeah, just content keep us busy, give us new things to see. Um, which doesn't uh, affect any major core components of the game. And, and for, for the rest, just, I'm, I'm willing just, to wait. Just to quickly address War Dacker, it's not that we're not happy with 3.0. I think it's more we're not happy with the performance of 3.0, not being able to enjoy 3.0 as thoroughly as 2.6.3. And if you're not as motivated 
to go in, log in, and play or test the game. It should really be testing, I'm sorry. Um, it, you're not going to get much data back, and you need mm. the data to fix the stuff. So it, it does become a vicious circle to a degree. They don't need everyone to log in and get, get, get all the information off of you, but having a certain amount of people logging in, doing bug reports, which are, is going on and is happening, helps. But it's just hard. I mean, what are your experiences on 3.0 Ghost? Um, it's definitely janky. Um, you know, obviously the frame rate is real rough. But when you can get into a new server and for that brief stint of, you know, 50 to 60 frames, it's really impressive. It's just watching the frame rate slowly tank into the teens is, you know, disheartening. But um, I'm... I'm really hoping that this year really is kind of a turning point for them because that's kind of what they were talking about between the ATV and the RTV and such that, you know, now that they have that in, now that 3.0 is out live, um, you know, as broken as you want to say it is or it is, that now they can start iterating on it and fixing it and, you know, between the 3.1 patch, you know, hopefully changing up, uh, you know, optimizing things because, you know, they tried to go through and explain that a little bit where, it's not like they're going through and doing final optimization. It's more of a, hey, we put this shit together with a sledgehammer. Let's go through and like try and clean it up a little bit so it's not like completely broken before we start adding lots of more stuff on top of it. Tony so Zervik that actually put that put 3.0 together in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> exactly. Be more thankful. But then again, that, that over brings Christmas. up another question. <laughs> um, Telephone. <laughs> um, when you someone's when bringing you, you up, saying, "Bog, Bog, you never believe who I just saw on the internet. It's I you. It's, it's 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 not my phone." <laughs> now, what I wanted to say, and that's the 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 thing I completely don't understand about Chris Roberts at the moment. He always says, "I'm not gonna release anything if I'm not happy with it." How can he be happy with the release of 3.0 when they released it before Christmas? It should have I been think, in PTU still. I, I, you kind of get this picture in your mind of a conspiracy. Last day of work, everyone at CIG was like, is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone in the car. He's gone. All right. Get out. Get out. Go. Press the button. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, don't, I don't know. But I, yeah, I don't know what to think of it. It's... Uh... <sighs> It's yeah. not a step back. That's for damn certain. Sure, sure. It, it is in many. It is definitely a step forward. Sure, the performance sucks, and it it's virtually you know it, it's you've got to be really dedicated and really motivated to stick it through, no matter what. But it is a step in the right direction. And if uh, what is it, March, end of March to PTU for the next one, which is going to be. Performance enhancements, optimizations. It's not too long of a wait, but that, that and we, they haven't. That you know, they are, have said they're going to be addressing hot fixes and small content fixes. Well, not content fixes, small, um, small issues in the interim. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So it, yeah. And here we are again. As we were last year, saying you know it's it's not quite ready yet. You know, just just wait until this date, and and here we are, unfortunately, again saying you know maybe it'll be the end of March in this one. And this is the problem. It's not uh, that we've um, lost faith in the project or anything like that. It's just we we said you know last year, yeah, just wait for three to come out. Now three point has come out. We're like just just wait until the next one. I mean, I exactly. think it's been like. I think when you're explaining like it to someone who isn't in, yeah, that it's it's a little bit sketchy when you hear it from or w when you're hearing it, not knowing the the cycle that we have gotten accust accustomed to. Um, but I mean, it's it's been like that every patch. It's like, oh yeah, just wait for this patch, and then the patch comes out. Uh, wait till the next patch, and then that patch comes out. Uh, wait for the next mm. one. So, um, and it. It's not the actual content, the actual when they when there's something there, it's fun. It's right. good to play. We're not saying it's a bad thing, People it's are a bad game or anything like 3. that. Mm. Despite the the issues. 
So yeah, absolutely. I like to see how how the game evolves from scratch to where we are now. It, it's such a big difference. And again, I don't have any expectations of dates and promised features for those dates. Uh, I will just see what what's going into that patch and. Uh, well, let's get surprised, you know? Like Carbide Edge says, he's bang on. Might not have been ready, but if it wasn't released yet, people would bitch about it not being out. It is a no-win yeah. situation. And yeah, yeah I no agree. matter what I is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. But there was also a monthly report that came out. And the, only, the, the things that interested me the most that I thought we could talk about were the ships, because spaceships is why we're all here. I'm here for the pets. Yeah, where the fuck are the pets? Yeah, I I, I backed when I heard that there were going to be pets in the game. That and fish trading. Fish, yep. Still waiting on that one. Did they they ever actually confirm that fishing is going to be in the game, or was that just a player wish? I sure hope hope so. That's going to be a three months delay. (laughs) (laughs) We can't get the bomber physics right. Right. No, no, it's spawning God. time. <laughs> fish AI. Okay. They're two shellfish. They won't share. So, Constellation Phoenix uh, has hit the white, well, is beyond white box and progressed into grey box. It's, what are we thinking on the Constellation Phoenix? Because if you've got one now, you can spawn... I don't know, the the most recent thing they gave us into the hangar. And it used to look quite glorious. You know, work in progress and all, it looked quite glorious. And now it looks absolutely hideous compared with the new ships that look gorgeous. Mm. So, thoughts on the Phoenix? What have they got to accomplish to make this thing look luxurious and gorgeous? Do you want it to look luxurious and gorgeous? What What... What do you envision the Phoenix even being used for here? Parties. Target practice? Tar- yeah, target, target practice. practice is a good answer. I like that. I, I've got nothing better than that. You really don't give a shit about the Constellation Phoenix? Nope. nope. Well, I tried, fellow owners, but no one gives a fuck about our ship, it seems. I'm going to make my own party ship, and it's going to have blackjack and hookers. And it's going to be a Drake? No. I'll find can something I, other than a constellation to make it out of. Can I come on your party ship? Yeah. It's going to be a reclaimer with uh, blackjack and hookers on it. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. No thoughts on the Phoenix moving along? No? No one? I picked this out especially because Phoenix is exciting stuff. Did you Did you see what they've done with this, the um uh, tub? It, it sinks... Into the floor. No, no, no. It's 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 a hot tub, not a sink. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You didn't want to leave that pun untapped, did you? No. Next time, plug it. One-legged hookers. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm kind of with the original grip. Uh, Phoenix was an impulse buy. He has no idea what he's going to use it for. Pretty much the same. I'm just hoping it's going to have a bit more weapons and stuff on it than a normal Phoenix so I can shoot shit with it I'm, and then have a bath after. For for people like Shiv, I don't really know what you could use it for, but um, you could do you could use it like a, a company limousine uh, where you can like do important uh, important business meetings on it. Uh, say like you're a trading company and you don't really have a use for the Phoenix every day, but if you need to meet with a, a high ranking uh, person that you're doing business with from another company, you could be like, ah, oh, let's take a spin around the system in my Phoenix and share drinks and talk business. And it'd be kind of that's, weird. that's actually a really good idea. You know, sort of thinking outside of a mission system or anything like that. That's, that's very good. I like that. Um, okay. So someone, one of you's got a bound to have thoughts on the Anvil F8 Lightning entering white box phase at the beginning of the month and progressed nicely in between bug fixing tasks. I'm I'm still waiting for the F9. Very very frightening. <sighs> I like you too much for that pun. I like you too much for that pun. <laughs> no one's got any thoughts on the F8. No, I thought the um, F8 was no. Quite I'm controversial. sorry, Chef. I'm sorry. 
I, really? I thought the F-8 was very controversial because um, originally we were told we're not going to be able to fly one and then we're being told it might, being sold, might be being sold, so there's a bit of an uproar about it. I'm not a fan of the no way it looks, so I don't really care. Where's the salt? Come on, guys! Where's the salt? Ah, we, ah. Uh, kosher. This is a low-sodium podcast. Sorry. Curse your salt, get it. So, if we... Do you have any feelings, one way or the other, about being given the F8 for sale or not? Would you prefer it not? Would you prefer it does? Would you not give a shit? Uh, I think back when they announced it, I, I was a bit bothered by it, uh, the same way Eris was, where it's very much so like, oh, they made it sound like it's a military vehicle that we won't be able to buy because... It's a military vehicle, and uh, it's only going to be used in uh, Squadron 42, and you can maybe steal one in the PU. But at this point, I, I don't know. I don't really care. I'm quite surprised. I wonder if, how much of the percentage of the people in the community you represent when you say that, because that was a big outcry at the time. Oh, you want to buy it? Oh, you should never buy it. And people nearly went to war over that for 400 years. But now everyone's just sort of chilled out. And maybe I've picked the wrong people this week. That was like 30 ships ago. Nobody cares anymore. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I don't well, even do you, know I, if I was so heavily involved in Star Citizen at that time. Uh, I just looked it up to, to see the shape again. Hmm. I do like the shape, but I... I love my Super Hornet too much. I think Brivals compared it to the Bat to Batman's Tumbler, and it's kind of a cross between mm. that and um, mm. are they called Land Speeders, Air Speeders in Empire? The little snowmobile that takes down the Atat. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Doesn't remind me of that. I think it's yeah, a snowspeeder, it, it, yeah. Okay, snowspeeder. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, Star Wars people. I'm not huge on the lore. All right, all right. So someone here is bound to have a view on the revised Avenger. Bigger, sexier, darker. Three fifths darker. Three fifths bigger, because it's black on the outside. Is isn't it somewhat longer? But like they they change the the ratio of how long it is to how wide it is. Like it's longer than it was wide. Like, when they increased the size, they made it a little bit longer, and they made it a tiny bit wider, but they didn't increase it just, like, a, a like one-to-one -one scale bigger. They kind of, I don't know. I kind of like that they made it longer and not wider, because uh, it makes it... You're not going to hit your head getting out of the damn thing. That's yeah. true as well, yeah. Although I kind of, I, I don't know, back when the, they first put the Avenger in, uh, I kind of liked the fact that you had to crouch to get in. I don't know why. It was useless. I'd see we it, it made it feel a bit more primitive and raw, I suppose. Yeah. And it kind of gave you that feeling of, oh, this is an older ship that uh, the police used to use or whatever, or the police still use and the military used to use. And there's a two-seater variant. Like, we, we were screaming for the two-seater variant. I'll be honest, I forgot, I forgot that there was a two-seater variant, but I'm happy to see it's back. What do you? What use is that second seat going to be to anyone? Either any of you, if you if you've already got a use in mind, or what you think, anyone. Don't all rush with an answer at once. Other than the fact that you can just bring another person along with you, it's not like it's terribly useful. That's like there's a turret or anything you can use with it, but at least you can bring someone else with you without having them like, hey, go sit in the back with the cargo. You know, other than that, there's not really a specific use, I don't think. Yeah, check up on the, the prisoners. But, yeah, I was just going to say, know. hey, hey, Johnson, go check on the prisoner in the back. Okay, yeah. boss. Oh, so spare for transplants or blood transfusion. Mm. Hey. Mad Max yeah. in space, oh, I like it. It's kind of nifty if you can give them some degree of control. If you, if you could at least give them control of the ship so you could teach people how to fly in it, that would be pretty groovy. Mm. But otherwise, yeah, it just seems a bit... 
Well, I mean, that was the original point of the two-seater was the fact that it was the trainer, so I don't know if it actually you, will still have both controls, but... Mm. I, the original I, grip said the F7CM, the Super Hornet, is a great ship on its own without, spe- without a second person in it. It's hard to justify a second seat to me. I, uh, You've got I, a point. I would love uh, to go into the game with my friends that don't fly as much and like i mean i'm not saying i'm great at flying but i'd love to go in with people that barely know how to play the game at all but want to get used to it and i'm flying the the avenger i'm in the front seat and i'm heading towards an asteroid field and i just go all right you got it and i hit a button and it just switches all the control over to them and they just have to freak out trying to figure out how to fly through the asteroid field while i'm sitting there with my arms crossed Okay. Is that your thing? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like nice. a death wish, but alright. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be more inclined to be like, here, I'll take off and fly into the middle of nowhere where there's no asteroids around and then exactly. let you fly. Well, I mean, Ghost, you know the odds of uh, navigating an asteroid field, right? Six. Actually, I don't remember the number. Never no, tell him the no odds, Ghost. Six and a half, I don't know. Oh yeah, so secondary seat on the F on the Super Hornet, I can see at least you know a radar operator, or if you're using a HOTAS, you might prefer to have the the gimbal turret for the guy in the back or something like that, you know, that, something like that, so you can focus on your fixed weapons forward. But the Avenger, unless it's a mm, simple control, maybe navigation, I can see happening, but that's but not much else. Maybe give it missile control, but even that's not great. It's still pretty cool, though. I mean, it's definitely better to have something extra there that you may or may not be able to use than not having the choice at all. Which kind of defines that ship in some extent. It's kind of it's the useful ship, but it's not really great at anything. But it's a mm. hell of a you know second tier starter, call it. Yeah, it's something you would go from you know when. After you've had an Aurora for a month or two, you go into your Avenger and you think, this is the bee's knees. I've got a cargo and I can stand up in my ship. <laughs> I thought it was thought it was funny as well. They said that when they were designing the Avenger, they never pictured it having an interior that you could walk around. It just sort of yeah. accidentally happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, new cockpit glass. It sounds incredibly mundane, but have you ever looked through some of these cockpits and gone, why does this look like I've been drinking for six hours? Yeah, or glass in general. Mm. Look at some of the glass in the elevators in, uh, what is it, not Grim Hacks. Uh, Do you remember the old business hangar glass oh, on the windows there? Yeah. But this new cockpit glass looks pretty swish, I have to say. And it should get rid of all that glare. It should look quite nice. I was very afraid when I bought my Prospector a month ago that I had this this fishbowl effect in in my cockpit, and luckily it's it's not there. It's it's a really nice view, not much glare, just yeah, absolutely perfect. Way way better than than what we saw in what was it Gamescom 2016 or even later on. I don't know. In some anniversary stream, they they showed off the prospect, and I was like, oh my god, you can't see anything through that cockpit. Mm. Well, it looks like the 600i, they removed the struts, so you could see more on the 600i. It looks like they're doing a bit more thought on the cockpits, but with, um, with more MFD being added and new cockpit glass... What are your thoughts? I mean, have you seen much of the new cockpits? What are your thoughts on the new cockpits? Um, well, I saw... I, I normally fly a Super Hornet and nowadays for trading my Freelancer or the, the Cutlass Black, but I noticed that the position in the uh, Super Hornet was a little bit different than before, more, more to the back, which gave mm-hmm. me a somewhat better view uh, to the front and a little bit of the sides with the MFDs um, uh, lower down the line, but the real readability of the MFDs is still lacking on on almost every ship out there, and that's a no. big big annoyance. 
you're quite into VR gaming. So yeah. with some yeah. of these bridges, like the cat, I think the Carrick has got it quite famously. As the captain, you are, and yes, Wardaka, they got rid of the glare. You are effectively on a seat in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by glass, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic view. But if you're like me, you might get a bit, scared of the height this is especially in vr on that is that something that you're looking forward to or something that you're kind of dreading in that regard and you're going if you're scared just of not going to do it uh, uh i'm scared shitless of heights <laughs> me as well so that that's funny um I, I i can say that yes some things when you're standing on a cliff in a vr game it's scary as hell for me. Other other people don't have that that fright, but it can be really scary. But it's very very fun at the same time. So in a game, I'm not the person that completely loses myself in a game. So I, I can definitely uh, put my mind back into reality and say, okay, this is not real. You know, <laughs> it's just fake. It's pixels in the depth, and that's it. But I'm I'm really looking forward to to some type of VR in uh, in Star Citizen, which is way way off. I know that that who um, is is Grimlock. Grimlock did a stream last night, I think, uh, uh, a Star Citizen stream in VR. So probably with with Warp X, uh, third party program to start up games in in VR. Mm. I don't know. I haven't watched it, so I'm really curious about his uh, uh, how how it uh, did, did go with him. If he got sick, that's that's the main problem, I think. Getting sick quite easily. Yeah. Well, uh, especially yeah. at 15 frames a second. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Bia, as someone who does VR a lot, what do you think of the announcement of the the Vive Pro? Um. I think that uh, that that was the next step they they had to do. Same goes for Oculus. I, I own an Oculus Rift. I don't have oh, okay. uh, any experience with the uh, with the Vive, but it does look bulky. I have to say, mm. and I know from other people they they said the Vive is they're so close together compared to quality, image quality, mm. and that sort of stuff. But one thing that that really stands out for the oculus is the um how it fits on your head the weight mm. the 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 size it's it's just a little bit more better than the vive um but yeah i don't know uh, i haven't fitted any vive on my head yet mm. but uh being it uh cordless way way better than than what we have now yeah, yeah. i i think the uh, the one thing that stood out to me as well is that they were increasing the resolution um, so also, the reason, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And and do do mind that uh, when the first time I I played Elite Dangerous in in VR, it was absolutely awesome, although the resolution was lower. Mm. But then you make this distinguished decision: well, do I go for higher res resolution or this this completely different gaming experience? And that's what, what takes you. The gaming experience. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Anyone else going to experiment or try VR out with Star Citizen? I think I will at some point. <laughs> if I ever finally save up enough money to buy a headset, then yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I had one of the original DK1s, which was really impressive, but also obviously really, really crappy. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, the only thing that I was mildly excited about the whole new Vive thing until I saw that they were not shipping with the new Knuckles controllers, but that's still in mm. R&D, and I was like, those are super interesting, and I'd be more inclined, but even then, it's like, <clears throat> they're going to keep iterating on all this stuff, so I was, so I'll bide my time, keep waiting. These things okay. are awesome, by the way. <laughs> I, I have heard that the Oculus controllers are pretty awesome. Yeah. It's better than the remote control type thing you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. This actually fits so well into your hand. It tracks the movement of your fingers in this ring, um, the layout of it the does. buttons. It's, it's just awesome. That's but amazing. Enough commercial. It's it amazing. Tracks your, it tracks your fingers' movements through the ring. 
Yeah. I've dated yeah. girls like that. Like some, yeah. Do you remember when we were kids, we would stare at the TV? Your mother would say to you, oh, you'll go blind if you, you know, stare that close to the TV. Now we're strapping these fucking things to our face. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm, uh, well... I'm carrying glasses, so for me, it's uh, it was a real struggle to put that thing on, and mm. um, you try it without glasses, and it's one big blur, and you have this thing in front of your eyes, and it's warm, humid, and you're starting to sweat. <laughs> so it, it's really uncomfortable at first, but you, you're getting used to it. Um, and now I have a prescription glasses inside my Oculus nice. with a special frame, so... Put off my glasses, put the rift on, and that's it. Way back. I had a DK2, and one of the things uh, someone said was get a USB fan so you can plug it in. And st- and then I thought to myself, yeah. wait, because I, I actually did that. And then I, before I, I combined the two, I thought to myself, wait, I, I no, no, I don't really. If, if someone walked in on you and you've got this fan pointing on your head and a rift strapped to your face, you're like, no, I, I don't really want to explain my way out of that. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the thing with VR, it's going to be great in Star Citizen when you're in a vehicle. I mm. don't know how well it's going to work when you're not in a vehicle. That's always going to be a bit of a bugger. Well, that's the Bo- basic problem with VR in general. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. exactly, Ghost. Yeah, mobility. You know, once <clears> they can, <throat> if they can ever get around to fixing that, they in a non, you know, multiple thousands of dollar solution, then it's really going to take off. At the moment, it's like, here, buy a giant treadmill. Okay, no. or Pretty you know, much. Or at that point, you're basically just teleporting. Yeah, because yeah. if, you, if you give them, like, joystick or, or WASD controls, it, it tends to make you more motion sick, right? Yeah, from what I've seen, and again, my own experience is the original DK1, but yeah, I've, it's real disorienting when you try and like push a stick forward and all of a sudden your guy jumps forward, you know, mm. at normal speed for a game. Yeah. I remember playing uh, Team Fortress 2 with that thing and playing as like the heavy was fine. You know, you kind of like just a big giant mobile turret. Try playing the scout. Nope. You're going to throw oh. up in about two minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly uh, nausea is, is created while... Uh, let's say controlling your character via uh, some kind of joystick, you know, and not moving your body with just a walking motion or looking to the right and go slightly to the right. If you're doing that with your hands, your brain messes up and uh, you will get sick within an instance. Yeah, it's the disconnect between what your physical body is doing and what the, exactly. what your brain thinks it is doing because it's being shown then. Yeah. And that wouldn't be a problem if that sickness you, you're experiencing would last for like two seconds. But uh, I know that I was playing a, a story-driven game called The Faded about a little Viking village. Um, it was amazing. But when I got sick, I stayed sick for like two hours. <laughs> that was a bit too much. But yeah. Mm. So... Before we go into questions, I'd like to ask uh, Bok and Ghost some questions about themselves. I say questions about, basically, I, I, tell us about you. Ghost, who are you? What do you do in the community? Shitpost. Um, no. I, like that. Yeah. Um, not much. Hang out in discords and help where I can, but no, I... Uh, the one thing I, w- I wish that I could remember is where in the hell I heard about the game the first time because I heard about it pretty much immediately in 2012. Um, started following it, started, you know, uh, answering questions and stuff like that on the subreddit, you know, mm. first year basically. Um, started hanging out with the guys from Out, which then became Relay, and just basically following the game. So nothing terribly like exciting. It. So... What made you follow Star Citizen in the first place? Are you a Chris Roberts game fan in general, or was it just the game itself that attracted you? Um, I was aware of who Chris Roberts was. I knew he had made all the Wing Commander stuff and uh, various other things. I had never played them, but I knew that they were, you know, in that same genre as like, uh, you know, the old X-wing, uh, Tie Fighter, X-wing versus Tie Fighter, all that stuff, mm. which those I did play a lot of, and it was at a point where. 
I was getting really fed up with the AAA devs and how just kind of crappy everything was as far as, especially on the PC side of things. And so when someone came up like, hey, we're making a space game. It's only on PC. It's going to be awesome. I'm like, oh, okay. Now do I have to like, you know, do I just mail you a check, mail you my firstborn? What are we doing here? Um, <laughs> Whatever you want, you got it. (laughs) Yeah, and and that was one of the things that the only reason that I signed up a couple of these after the initial launch was because I was like, okay, now do I really want to spend a hundred and twenty some dollars on a Hornet? Because that's ridiculous for spending that much money on a video game. Oh, how young and foolish I was. (laughs) Um, Yep, I went through the same thing. I got the the one for the uh, Hornet pack. Uh, cause mm-hmm. I wanted the spaceship shaped USB drive. Ghost, uh, not ghost, Bock Bear, sorry. I was looking at ghosts and I was talking to Bock. Oh, just... <laughs> Bock Bear. Yeah. Same, same so story, about, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah. on, in the early days, huge fan of, of everything that, that, uh, Chris Roberts made, uh, a big Wing Commander fan. Played it on the Amiga, and that that got me sold on uh, space games in general. Um, now, in in 2012, I heard about Chris Roberts trying to start up this this new company and a new game, Star Star Citizen, and I got really excited. But I don't know why I got well, I lost track of of this whole project due to other things and. Um, I think it was late 2013 or 14, early 14, that I uh, uh, I bought my my first uh, pack. Uh, well, I did did walk around in 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 the hangar a bit, and that was basically it. And somewhere in 2015 or 16, I started to stream, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Uh, if things are taking too long, I'm going to stream another game, so I'm trying not to get salty uh, over it. Uh, that's what we were talking about before the, the stream. But, uh, yeah, furthermore, I hang out on, on Spectrum, uh, unfortunately on Reddit, which I shouldn't do, and <laughs> on several Discords. <laughs> oh, cool. Is it, I mean, for either of you two, Ghost or Bark, is it, uh, have you played space sibs before or is it just a sort of you know they were something i heard of back when i was a lad no, no i played lots of uh x-wing versus tie fighter tie fighter x-wing uh whatever the alliance one x-wing alliance something like that yeah yeah um and then the other big thing was uh descent descent one two three you know all those um but all of that stuff kind of just I don't even know when it happened because it was just all of a sudden it was like that those games really don't exist anymore. Um, and there was a good like decade or so where that you know there was a couple, but that was about it. Um, but now between this game and then you know elite and a lot of other ones, the the space sim genre has definitely started taking back off again, which was you know mm-hmm. Chris Harvest said that was the point, and it's definitely becoming a thing, which is good because you are you are right. I mean, space sims did just suddenly drop off and everyone was like oh remember rts's remember they were good but no one ever and point and click adventures but no one was like remember the space sim you had a x i think that was about it really pretty much yeah i remember doing Mm. uh what was the other one it was oh free space free space was one that was probably one of the last ones that i remember playing um free space one and two uh and i i don't remember when the hell it was late 90s maybe early 2000s i can't remember (laughs) Glorious game, though. Glorious game. That was fun. Nitro, I don't know if we've ever asked you on Relay your history with Star Citizen. How did you discover the game? What, um, were you a Star Citizen fan before it was cool? Uh, I backed in 2014. Uh, I think I heard about the game shortly after the Kickstarter ended. Um, but my friend and this... Uh, I'm I'm sorry, but my my friend came to me in high school and was like, "There's this game that's coming out, and uh, and it's a little bit expensive, but it's it's really cool." And he showed me the like the Squadron Forty Two trailer um, with the guy getting in the Hornet and flying around and and the Vandal exploding things and the Bangle and whatnot. 
And I was like, this is the coolest looking game I've ever seen. And he was like, yeah, you would be able to do whatever. Um, and I was like, okay. So I rationalized uh, paying $140 for a, uh, a virtual spaceship, um, which $140 for a high schooler is a lot because I didn't have much money back then. Uh, so it was a big gamble. And then now that... Can I, I just mean, ask, what, what CPU do you run again? At the uh, moment, uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> let's see. I have a lot more disposable income now, so uh, also I saved up a lot. So Shiv, That's I low shiverable. I I Shiv. earned this i nine. So, well, thank you for the boys and girls at home. What what CPU was it? I earned this i <laughs> nine shiver. Chris, I nine sixty nine hundred X. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when does it get delivered? When? Oh, you mean my gaming laptop that I ordered? Yeah, that'll that'll be here <laughs> Tuesday. Okay. Well, I thought the processor was one of the uh, deliveries. But oh no 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 no. That's uh, okay. no. Um, my monstrosity of a computer is what I'm using right now, and I cool. I, cool. I paid a lot of money for that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So. I was like, yeah, I'll pay $140 for a spaceship. Because uh, I was like, oh, I get, a, I get a cool, like, glossy map that I'll be able to, like, put up uh, somewhere. And uh, I'll get the, I think it comes with, like, an ammo crate game case or something like that. I can't remember. Um, either that or I get one of, like, the metal physical game cases. Um, and then the spaceship-shaped USB. And, uh, and now I'm a concierge backer with a huge computer. And I do stuff every week to do stuff in the community. So to justify spending that <laughs> money, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So let's move on to questions. And start to see your questions on on link is LinkedIn chat. There you go. There you go. Obviously, if pre-recorded link will well, link will work, but we're we're not going to answer it because this is past, and you're watching it. It's in future. Did we survive the nuclear holocaust? So, anyway, Heramus asked, is Ahmed the spirit of Christmas? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Nice and easy. Um, some rogue called Fastcar asks, Shiver, if you're scared of heights, were you afraid of Maya when you met him? He's quite tall. I didn't meet Maya. I've never met Maya. I, I would have expected him to be taller, to be honest. I he think Fastcart's mistaken me he. for another white dude, and I have to tell Fastcart we don't all look the same. <laughs> uh, the original Grib, how many, of you, how many of you didn't think the MFD was very usable until you started using it? Have any of you used it much? Chat. No thoughts on the MFDs? Well, you said uh, chat, I don't know. Um, <laughs> That's including I, chat. Uh, okay. I didn't use it very much until I saw someone else do something, and I was like, I did not realize that that was the thing. I didn't realize that in the cut list, the far left panel actually is the uh, communicate with the landing pad panel. So all of a sudden I could stop using my stupid Moby glass when I'm, you know, 500 meters away or whatever it is, and I could just push a button on my screen and call the landing pad and get a, get a port. So that was pretty handy. That's the only thing I use as well, uh, hailing the station, and that's basically it. You know, you can move your shield stuff. I know, I know. But I, you should... When's the last I... time you got shot at instead of crashed? That's what I thought. <laughs> it doesn't happen often in the hangar. It's... I control that via voice attack and not via my FS FSDs. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, it's true. Y you get shot at by other players more when you're on foot, but when you're kind of just flying around in space. People don't really mess with you. Unless they're specifically trying to get their wanted level really high. But, I mean, because mm -hmm. I've, I've reaction shot people on foot. But, like, in space, I'm just like, I kind of look at the guy. And if he doesn't immediately start firing at me, I just, I just ignore him. Although, I, uh, yeah. Like, like I said, I've, I've gone through uh, Corvalex. And the doors opened, and a guy came walking, like, came, I'm sorry, floating, because you're in zero G, uh, came floating through the door, and I immediately 
sh like shouted and then unloaded a clip of my assault rifle into him and then was like <laughs> uh and then regretted it because I got one uh one wanted level so so uh, sneak up on car. micro fast car asks fuck beardage are you wearing your lead hosen today nope Unfortunately, they're hanging in the closet. Yeah. I haven't worn them since uh, Citizen Gone, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> people were shocked. Especially I'm... the German people. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, it seems to be a Bavarian thing, and it was actually funny. I was... Um, I had uh, somewhat to, to drink and I had to go to the bathroom. So I went. I was standing there relieving myself. There was this big, huge German beside next to me. And, um, oh, sorry. He said, actually, hey, man, I, I, I like your lederhosen. I'm like, okay, you're the first one uh, of today that, that said wait, that wait, to me. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to double, double check here. You're both standing at the urinal. Exactly. And this guy just, he breaks the rules and he starts a conversation with you. Exactly. And he's taller than you. Exactly. Okay. So, carry on. That, that was awkward, but um, it all comes together when I uh, explain I'm it. Not sure, I, I'm not sure I like that phrase, <laughs> where this <Yeah>. is going. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the thing is, he liked the lederhosen. I said, you're the first one who actually liked it, and especially all the Germans here don't like it, so how come? You like it. And he said, I'm Bavarian. I'm like, okay, there you have it. Problem solved. Only Bavarians, which I was warned of, uh, like Lederhosen because they are not right in the head. They say, I don't know, I'm not a German, but... <laughs> this, this, these are the conversations you have on the continent in public toilets. Exactly, exactly, yes, yes. Welcome to Europe. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit uncomfortable, I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, Tofu, there are rules. They're very similar to golf. You would just keep your head down, work on your swing, and try not to veer off to the left. Uh, Wardaka asks, what have, what have been your favorite experiences with 3.0 so far? Um... Well, besides the fact that I got got rescued by uh, uh, a viewer of my stream uh, three times on a, on a moon while I lost my ship, that was awesome. Uh, especially the fact, how do you find each other? Uh, and one of the last things we did uh, was, together with another viewer, uh, he dropped me off on the moon in a, in a ravine, and he did a ultra low fly by directly above me and it was awesome that's pretty cool ghost yep. I'm trying to remember something that was you know actually interesting and unique but most of my experience has been go from point a to point b and hope like hell the server or the game doesn't crash um so it's still than... knuckle knuckle biting really scary yeah the, the big scary Oh, by the way, that, you know, multiple thousands of UEC worth of gold in the back of your ship is now gone, as is your ship. Um, I think one of the more interesting ones was uh, someone was talking about something how, something about they were worried about, you know, running into players and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, I literally spent multiple hours, you know, basically AFK for my computer sitting in an outpost and never saw a soul. It's like, space be big. Very true. Very true. Nitro, any 3.0 experiences so far? Um, the last time I played, I went to check out an outpost for the first time, and I got there. There was nothing to do because someone had already replaced the battery uh, in it. I don't know if it was down or if you could fix it or whatever, but there was like the slot where you could put the, the power um, uh, thing in. Um, when I landed my Buccaneer, uh, the landing gear was um still being buggy so as soon as i got out my ship went nose up and i couldn't get back in it because the cockpit was in the air um so i uh looked for help in chat and some guy came uh was saying that he had a cutlass and uh he came and landed the cutlass and he was talking about how he was going to come unlock the doors because um 
uh, there's a bug with the cutlass where after you get in it and fly it, uh, the doors don't want to open from the outside. You have to open them from the inside. And uh, he said he was going to come open the door to let me in. And I think his game crashed because he stopped talking and <laughs> n the doors never opened on the ship and it just stayed there. <laughs> So I, I just alt-deleted alt and uh, and respawned, or whatever the command is. Throw us some more questions, by the way, guys. Loads of spaces for questions. Uh, Idris Carrier asks, what do you want to see in the Squadron 42 ATV episodes? A question. I'm Don't sorry. all flood me with answers here. I blanked. What, what, was what do question? you want to see in the Squadron 42 ATV episodes? More Mark Hamill. That's, that's, that's the response? More Gillian Anderson. I, that was going to be the my response? second answer. I have no idea. That's Actually, like the response. I mean, yeah. To be completely honest, more of flying through the giant rock with the lightning storm. Uh, or more information about that. Uh, like how they got the atmosphere uh through that um not mm. not not the air but like the the ambiance of the atmospheric setting yeah um of the the area the way they did uh because that was probably one of the coolest parts of the vertical slice so i like chat's answers the original grip a release date and bluesy progress <laughs> <laughs> those very good answers to be quite honest Rochelle. um <clears throat> I just like if they're going to show us some more things like uh, I don't know it's not going to be giving things away if they can at least show us some how it starts and then say you know oh well this is your first ship and this is what you use for the the first few missions until you get promoted or something like that and you know there's a promotion system and the promotion system is going to work like this you start off as a grunt peeling potatoes and then by the end of it you'll carry you're a Bengal carrier commander or something you know carbide edge has got the best answer ever more melissa mm -hmm. that's that that that's that's the that's best answer. pandering that, that's the answer pandering mm -hmm. yeah i'm curious how they're going to do all these updates uh first question for two without spoiling and you know showing missions and all this stuff it's like mm. other than the fact that it's done and we're releasing it what are you what's the updates about like other than yep working on it nope not done yet yeah I mean, they've got to do that with the production schedule, and unless that's going to be heavily coded, it's going to be just giving away absolutely everything, you know, like level four boss complete. And yeah. Mm. <laughs> Poor Taka says, "Can I get you to sing Happy Birthday to me?" Just kidding. Does it? Does anyone want to sing Happy Birthday to him anyway? I'll only sing if uh, someone else sings with me. I can't Pass. do English. Uh, no habla inglés. Okay, there we go. No, we're not. I'm sad. Sadly, none of us are heiress and want to humiliate ourselves that much. If this is why I'm glad there's no subscribers. Oh, yeah. I'd sing with heiress. <laughs> oh, you'd sing with. Oh, fuck you. Well, Pandering. He, he would. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Fasca, Shiva said, Shiva, you said there are rules at the urinal, but what if you need to, a hand to light a cigarette or hold your drink? Cigarette, drink. <laughs> Actually, have you, no, no, I'm, I'm not having I'm not going to comment on this. Great no, discussion. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a very amusing gif out there. Um, Fast car again, which of you did not buy a $350 concierge event ticket? I did not. Yeah, no. I did not. Like, sh sh should we talk about this three hundred and fifty dollar ticket dinner? I mean, I'm impressed they sold out so Chris? fast. You mean the three hundred and fifty dollar yeah, corn dog? <laughs> yeah, he, he. You get like a corn dog or something or ramen, and he just sits there with this goose meal. But yeah, like, what are your thoughts on that? Because I, I saw people were actually quite pissed off about it. Not yeah, everyone. We, I mean, we, some. What were we on that we talked about it a lot? Friday night show, probably. Probably where we, uh, 
we talked about how absurd it was, but I I really don't care. It's it's there, there for somebody. And yeah. clearly they wanted it because it sold out in like 30 seconds, but mm -hmm. yeah. I'm definitely it, not the target demographic for that one. It just seems, I mean, it's. I just found it a little strange, almost kind of borderline prostitution. <laughs> you know? It was like, hey, let's exploit Chris. <laughs> I just thought it was a little bit, I don't, I'm not against it or anything. I just thought it was very strange. Just, but I mean, it kind of, uh, for the people, obviously people wanted it, as Ghost said, but so it's cool, I guess. I still think it's a little strange. Although I, I, I suppose it isn't really. If it was dinner with Melissa, I'd have bought that in a second. You'd just have to watch the shiv shape dust go. But so, yeah, I suppose I can see the appeal when you put it like that. Um, fast cut again. Is the Phoenix no longer baller? I no one gets that. I, I think it's pretty baller. I think it is. Yeah. A disappearing, fading top and stuff, but it's mm. not for me. <laughs> there were new shields shown. That's quite difficult. Oh, to that say was cool as well. Yeah, that was. Uh, cool. uh, Where's that picture? Somewhere I, picture I saw so a quick. picture. Okay. You got that picture? I've got that picture. Uh, I know it's in somewhere. I got it's it there. But I've I now someone tell me which way this went because I don't know for sure. But someone said, "Didn't we always have form fitting shields?" No. They've no. Always, they've always been pill shaped, like a bubble. Yeah. Okay then. Okay, interesting. When they t hang on, when th th there's the liquid shield effect when there was the impact and it would spread out like like a liquid. It's yeah. very difficult to say some of these things today. It, it was still... Is that implemented? Oh, I don't know. Is this going to be part of these? Because that could quite that that would be quite nice. I don't know. We'll see then. What sort of effect do you think they'll need for? If your shields are being hit with EMP weaponry or, you know, something like the sucker punches that's designed to get your shields down, do you think you'll need a, a different visual cue to indicate your shields directly being leached? Or would you be all right with just this liquid thing? Well, let's see. When you get fired at, there, there's like a, a bit of an effect where your shield lights up and, and ripples out <clears> from where it got hit at. But... I don't know, showing, maybe showing the shield, like, form a hole that slowly engulfs the entire shield to where the shield will disappear, um, for, like, an EMP would be pretty interesting, or, I mean, the shield just flickering and then turning off, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it's really hard to to get any sense of direction when being hit, mm -hmm. uh, sitting in the cockpit. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, if that changed a bit in 3.0, but in 2.6.3, it was absolutely... I was clueless where I got hit from the left, right, above, behind me. I don't know. So they definitely have to uh, to implement something to, to get that better. Maybe not only in the... Uh, top right part of the of the hut that shows um, uh, well your enemy shields but your own shield you know where it depletes but also maybe with some sense of uh, what they showed off in earlier ADV um, the direction that you got hit off like you're swinging to the right or uh, you get a bump forward or backward so that you sense by your own body where you get hit. Mm. I, as a side note, I like Grit Spitter's um, thing. Wouldn't mind color variation depending on the shield emitter too. That would be mm. quite cool. Yeah. Like, Same yeah. color variation. Like being able to know what shield your enemy is using just from what color it is. Like, okay, I, I know that I'm really going to have to hammer this shield because it's green. Or, mm. oh, I can use... Um, a sucker, like two shots from a sucker punch, and this shield will be down because it's yellow. So, 
I was going to say, isn't the shield still uh, the ones you can buy? Isn't there like ones that are specifically designed for like laser energy weapons, and some that are designed for yes. ballistics, mm. and some are designed for missiles? So something like that would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to have their own different colored shields as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to have red shields so they can regenerate faster. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but uh, for for instance, look at Elite Dangerous. It will show off like three or four rings of shields around your ship, and that's getting plucked away each and every time the damage get, mm. gets harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. That would be a nice indicator. Um, that I think they they can do even better, and more more beautiful. Uh, I. I think, with all the people they have. <laughs> I think the original Grib came up with a, a good point that not only do we need to know how far our shields are being shot down, but how far enemy shields are. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, right now it's like, oh, I think that shield's down. No, the ripple effect just didn't go over there. Mm. No. I mean, how, and how often will you be? Will the shields be visual? Will they? Will you only see them when there's impact and? You know, for a short period of time thereafter, or will it be whenever they're on and your ship's going? Mm. See, I, I personally wouldn't think it is aesthetically pleasing if they were permanently on and fluctuating. Yeah. No, I don't like mm. that. Uh, spaceship training wheels. Has anyone completed Miles Eckhart or Ruto missions? Are they broken? Nope. I, uh, I haven't done any missions yet. I couldn't figure out how to talk to Miles Eckhart because I couldn't figure out which mission was his. I think I think it was Knight Rider posted someone else's um, gif of trying to hand in the cargo mission and it just ended with a scene from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly where they're just staring at each other <laughs> and not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seven Hells has a question he wants to get off his chest. Do you think Squadron 42 will have cleavage? ATV has it. Why not Squadron 42? Only if it's Mark Hamill's. Oh, you see, I, I'm just sat here going back saying, which one of us is going to make the joke? <laughs> which one of us is going to say it? <laughs> Tony Zirovec had great cleavage. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> I just enjoyed questions, watching... Keep some more questions coming in. I just enjoyed watching Xylo nod in agreement for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I kind of felt sorry for Zylo, kind of just, well, I say, do I need to? It's just like, you know, ask him a question, sit back, and let him go. Yeah, Zylo <laughs> looked like he was enjoying himself. I think he was fine. I listened to that guy for hours. And he must be a guitar player. I saw Tony doing these things with his hands, like oh, yeah. <laughs> finger practices and like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just like, it's funny. This is a blue room. This room, this room is blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the green room. <laughs> and he definitely uh, gave all his you knows to uh, to Aaron. <laughs> that was really clear yesterday. Um. So yeah, do do we think Squadron Forty Two will have cleavage? Probably. I I think uh, probably. Why not? Whose is the question? Heramus, what do you mostly do when you are in the PU? Um, I personally like just flying around. Um, I like finding the limits of what I can do in spaceships, um, turning uh, loops, whatnot. Um, I haven't really figured... I, I haven't played a, a 3.0 much at all. I, I don't even think I have it updated. Um, I think the last time I, I downloaded it was when it went live. So um, I haven't really done any of the, the missions or whatnot. Um, so I kind of like walking around, exploring, looking at places. I mean, you're interested in most doing engineering work, repairs, salvaging, mm. that sort of thing. I so. did get really excited walking into Dumper's Depot and seeing the physical ship parts on the shelves and being able to walk up to them and be like, I don't need that right now, but I could buy that if I wanted to. Ghost? I was going to say, most of my 
experience has been trying to run cargo missions to be able to afford pants, but haven't gotten there quite yet. So I'll mm. get there eventually. Talk there? Yeah, currently I'm still doing trading uh, without missions. Um, I tried some in the beginning, but they were all bugged. And I don't know what the status is right now. Uh, but yeah, the, doing fun stuff, doing some, some trading, um, doing some, some foolishness uh, on, on surface of moons and, and that sort of stuff. But yeah, you, you will basically need also some, some friends online for that to make it really, really fun and interesting to, to watch. But um, yeah, let, let's hope they will bring some, some nice updates in between in the next couple of weeks. Brivals, I've got a go. Uh, Brivals brought up a good point that there isn't really much incentive to do missions because they don't pay very much at all. Uh, yeah, not compared to cargo running, not even yeah, close. The first thing I noticed was that, uh, I mean, back in 2.6, you know, you could go do the, um, the PI mission and get like 2,500 UEC uh, really quickly. I mean, that's what I, I would do all the time. And now it's like I go and do the PI mission, I get 200, 300 maybe. So, so kind of like Bitcoin, the value used to be worth a lot, and it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, fluctuating. I've got a quick question for each of you. What sort of size groups do you see yourself playing in on release? Ooh. Nitro. Nitro. Start with you, nice and easy. Um, it fluctuates a lot. I could probably see myself playing with you guys a lot. Um, I know I've done that once, and I've, I, I know we've said that we've we would do it more often because that was a lot of fun, uh, flying around in a free. We taught you a lot of swear words, didn't we, Nitro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, I mean, a, a few of my friends owned ships, but. That's like two or three people, maybe. So I, I probably not play in very big groups. I'm not the kind of person to join a big organization and play with like twenty people at a time. So, mm. Ghost, what about yourself? Um, I would imagine most of it's going to be just me playing by myself. Um, beyond that, it'll be you know a couple of close friends where it's like, you know, we could fill a cutlass maybe, um, and then. Beyond that, it would become, uh, you know, playing with relay and stuff like that. And, you know, that might be five, ten people at a time. Um, but most of that's going to be stuff like, you know, somebody wants to go exploring. Okay, somebody brings ships to defend or somebody, you know, crews on it or somebody drives the, you know, uh, rover, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. More, more longer, more longer term type things like a longer mission as opposed to like let's go run cargo for twenty minutes. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can do that myself. <laughs> well, bear. Well, uh, same story. I think uh, most of my time I'll sp uh, spend solo, doing trading, doing lots of mining, I guess. Um, but after that, when I usually play with, with a couple of other guys, I think uh, a group of five will suit me well. Um, and if we have some specific object objectives that we want to do, that, that's fine with me. I'll skip the solo stuff. But I think it's an 80 to 20 percent uh, thing. 80 percent solo and the rest is group. Cool. Uh Thank you for the questions. Keep keep them coming. Uh, not the beard god asks. Would Relay be willing to do no shaving until Alpha four point <laughs> <laughs> I picture no. old Chinese men. In the, I in the I'm not right uh, I'm not part of uh, Relay. I'm just a freelance producer. <laughs> uh, they they uh, pay me in puns and uh, sometimes skittles. You get Skittles? A little bit, yeah, sometimes. I never get Skittles. What Grit does that tell you? asks. It tells me I'm a very bad person. Grit Spitter asks, speculation question. What couple of new features do you think will be added in 3.1? Grim Hex Racetrack, a truck stop or two. What would you like to see added? Uh, Grim Hex Racetrack would be nice. Yeah, that will be cool. 
I'll say, I think the thing I'm most interested in is just, you know, finalizing and fixing the stuff that we've already gotten and including things like, I don't know, maybe being able to log out in a bed in a outpost and stuff like that. Cause I'm pretty sure that's still not a thing. Um, and then also things like, Hey, the game crashed and my ship was flying in the middle of nowhere with lots of cargo in it. Maybe it's still mm. there or maybe it's like automatically flies back somewhere that I can go get it as opposed to it just going poof. You know, things like that will make it a lot better to play it longer term as opposed to, well, all my money's gone because my ship vanished because the server crashed. So, so Ghost, can I ask you, on, on which region do you play? Is it uh, USA only or? Uh, I think I've done USA, I've done best, and I think I've done the Australian servers. And it's okay. it's always a toss up as far as what happens. I've had it where I literally left uh, Levski one time and I was being greedy with a load of uh, gold and I had gotten the ship to take off I had gotten out of the hangar I had aimed at the sky and just punched it and the traffic control guy said something like you know you know, be safe out there or don't crash or something and I was like eh, <laughs> crash <laughs> I was like god damn it <laughs> damn you and that, was, and that was I think that one was a server crash and the other one was most recently was uh, coming out of Grim Hex and I think I had a little bit of cargo because I only had a Hornet with me jumped in the Hornet and I don't remember if I, I don't think I'd powered up anything, but I got in the ship and like all of the display screens were screwy. Like they're mm. all showing like Grim Hex uh, buttons and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, turned the ship on and they all fixed themselves. And I'm like, okay, good. And like the shield effect went over and then it just hard locked the whole game. I was like, oh, wow. okay, I guess I'm done for the night. Okay. I've got a completely different experience. That That's why I asked because I have playing sessions of like three to four hours um, and then I'm the one who's logging off and not the game yeah um, I basically it, it's 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 hit or miss because I've definitely had yeah. ones where like I said I've I've afk'd from the computer sitting in an outpost waiting for the sun to come up for yeah hours right yeah. And, yeah you know had no issues but yeah knock on wood I I mean granted I haven't played as much as you guys but I haven't in- experienced a server crash or a game crash yet so, I, I've noticed uh, it, it's a bit chunky in the hangar. I don't get my full sixty FPS in the hangar. Really? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, since three point oh, I, I I haven't been getting full sixty FPS in the hangar. That's but I, I think that's probably more to do with the the res I'm running these mm. days. To be honest. Um, Hermus asks, "Do you?" Do you like the new cycle of ATV subjects with an afterward QA in RTV? Well, we've only had the one so far, but, you know, I mm. so far so good. Um, I did like how he was talking about how they're going to do all of the Squadron 42 questions after they do the Squadron 42 ATV, which was nice. Um, although I think, I know that the question originally was supposed to be specifically to Squadron 42, and they answered it, but I don't think he... Jared asked it correctly because they were talking about um, whether the question originally was whether or not there will be a female protagonist in Squadron 42 and Jared kind of asked the question like what's going on with the female character and then he answered it like the female character model not a protagonist in Squadron so I don't know if that ever actually got answered but now I I I did see I think it was Astro Pub uh tweeted out something that they did confirm there was going to be a female protagonist. So the best of my knowledge, I think he was just referring to the fact that he answered it. Oh yeah, of course. Except okay. if you listen to the question being asked, that's not what the question being asked was. Okay. Or at least how he actually phrased it. But the actual question that the community wanted to know was how is what's going on with that? Is that a thing? Is it not a thing? Cause gotcha. uh, I really think it's fair to say that, that that's surely going to be a thing. Well, it, I, I don't know. Cause it's, like, you'd think it would obviously be a thing because that would be what you want is to have a female protagonist. But I think, I can't remember, it might have been the Friday Night Show, but um, we talked about it somewhere about the logistics of going back and doing it with... Because uh, they, they didn't just have some Joe Schmo do the mocap for the protagonist. They had an actual actor... Uh, do the lines and everything because it, it's voice acted and everything and it's hard to just kind of go in and add mocap uh, with a completely different actress 
uh, that's you know voice acting it and stuff. Well, don't forget, Nakara did say that he there was a tweet by someone who claimed to have done the work for the character model, mm. the female character in the Squadron, but the tweet was quickly deleted. Yeah, we, me and Nakara talked about this weeks ago now, and we neither one of us could come up with a, a definitive answer. But yeah, the thing is that when they did all the Squadron 42 stuff, everything was performance captured, which is motion captured, but everybody does it together type thing. Right. And so yeah. you literally have to do one of two things. Either do the exact same thing twice with right. most of the actors and actresses except for whoever's doing the character, mm-hmm. or you have to have the female character's actress just do it by themselves. Yeah, but in fairness, that's not such a big deal to actors because they're used, that is their job. They, they do that's redo cool. the exact same scenes over and over anyway. You know, if you fuck something up, you redo the scene. So it's not a huge thing. And Assuming they did it. Right. Assuming I, they did it. I and I don't question. think they necessarily would have to redo every single scene because if it's um, generic responses that can be male or female, you could... So could you not? Could they not swap in post-production the male character with the female character? Theoretically, mainly because all of the stuff that the whatever the, the player character is doing is from your perspective anyway. So everyone else mm. is super important. Your you know motions and you know facial animation doesn't really matter to some mm-hmm. extent. So yeah, I'm curious to see if we ever should get an answer for that one. I I think it's more so that we they they talk so much about the male actor and the male protagonist that we're not quite sure if they did female stuff beside that uh, with another actress or if they've gone back and done it since then now that they're getting closer to adding the female uh, player character. Um, So I I think it's just... It's less so that we're not sure if they're willing to do it. It's more so we're not sure when they did it or if they're... or when they did it or uh, if it's done already. Yeah, and that's basically why the question got asked and everybody was excited to actually get an answer was because we just don't know. Let's quickly storm through these last three questions then. Uh, Tom Trustworthy, when will we get group support for missions and slash all the ability to send money to one another? I don't that's know. pretty much the answer, yeah. Uh, sadly, um, support from group support for missions and the ability... I know, they're, I know they're looking yeah. to put the beacons in for 3.1, but that's about the extent of that kind of stuff that we've been told so far. Yeah, I, would, I don't even think I could speculate seriously on that, because I, I, as far as I know, they haven't said anything in specific about that sort of work, really. I mean, you've probably got to get Spectrum to a certain degree anyway, because everything's going to be integrated with Spectrum, so... Expect an hour-long talk on Spectrum and how that's going to make it happen. I remember being excited for Spectrum, and I don't even go on it. Lean Citizen, if you could add any one in-depth feature slash game system not already stated, uh, slated, what would it be? Curveball, you must also remove two other features to do so. Which ones? Oh, shoot. Um, Let's quickly shoot, quickly go around the table for this one. Ghost, re- add one feature, take away two. I have no idea, because I was going to say pets, and they said it hasn't been announced yet. Um... Yeah, I got nothing. Oh. I'm not sure what I would get rid of, let alone, you know, add. Ghost breeding. That's it. That's what, what would you remove? What, I want to what would you remove for goat breeding? You got to remove two things. Oh my god. Um, Let's see, fish trading. I want to remove that that pet they announced that inferior goat type thing with those horns. They need to get out. <laughs> uh, no. Oh. Honestly, I don't have a clue. All right, Nitro. Uh, shoe shining. Uh, I want them to implement shoe shining. I want to be a shoe shine. Uh, and the thing I want them to remove is shirt and pants. Uh, I want everyone to just wear shoes. You know, you're gonna be like right at eye level with everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. Tom Trustworthy, right now we need to run off a landing pad to start bleh, run off a landing pad to start EVAing. When will we have another way to do this in space? Or jumping off something seems silly for us to get into an EVA state. They could honestly just implement holding the jump button, and mm-hmm. your guy could just like jump and then realize, oh, 
I should still be going up, and then he activates his thrusters. <clears throat> Hire me, yeah, Hi, Aiden Star. <laughs> do we have some sort of magnet in our shoes that keeps us attached no, to the I landing think, pad? Didn't they get rid of Mac boots, sadly? Yeah, and I don't know if they're ever coming back. I know right now the reason it works is that you're in like a gravity area. Speaking of things that they removed that I, I we haven't heard about in a while, whatever happened to those thing uh, that those animations when you're EVAing through stuff and your guy would just randomly like grab on the handles and pull himself through. Oh, that was that, yeah, what that, was that called? the juke system. Uh, was similar. that part of the juke system? Or yeah, it might have been part of it. That was procedural, but... procedural animation when they encounter an obstacle turn. Because what was that, Gamescom two years ago? That was that, right. like that was impressive. It looked like it was well implemented. Push, push, All right, let's push. quickly bash out these last two questions. Bryvols, uh, anyone notice how buying ships have been left out of the three point X updates? No, I did not notice that. Mm -mm. But didn't they say they're going to try and get that in it as soon as possible? I'm assuming it's going to come in at some point, but I know that the what they've told us will be in the updates has been real sparse right now. So we'll see if the new mm -hmm. website update gives us a better, you know, version of all that stuff. Cause right now it's like new stuff. Don't tell you what it is. And final question from fast cut. It is 2948. Are you going to party like it's 2949? Of course. Well, it sounds, um, well lit. Bam. <laughs> Yikes. I think that's pretty much it then for this week. Thank you very much for joining us, Bok Beer and Ghost. It's an absolute pleasure having you. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank, thank you at home for coming along and supporting us. Without you, we wouldn't be doing this. Eris would be doing this, sadly. Uh, next week, he'll be doing it, hopefully. You won't have to put up with me. And that's everything. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the verse. <laughs>